So with module 27, the fighter will be getting some updates. First of all, we have some general updates, which are going to affect both paths, tanking and damage dealing. Keep in mind, this is still all a work in progress. Things are still open to change and up for feedback from the players. Now, as we can see here, three of the at wills are getting magnitude increases. Cleave gone to 55, Guarded Strikes 130, Shield Bash 55. Those three at wills you can find on both again the damage dealer and the tank. But now let's go to the damage dealer specifically, and we find that both its unique at wills are also getting updates. Heavy Slash, many of you did not like the recent adjustment to that where you can no longer slide around while casting it. So they've come up with this new change where it will now pull you towards your target a little bit, but it also does not need a target to activate. And the range has slightly increased on that. So you can see when I'm this distance from a dummy, you can actually hit the dummy and it will pull you towards the dummy a little bit as well, which is nice. So that gives a little bit more forgiveness on the at will with regards to your positioning and allow to pull you towards your target a little bit more, making sure you're within a kind of melee range. Then additionally on Reeve, your AOE ranged at will, it will now target in a line attack rather than what it was before where you needed to have a target. The targeting is now free form and can be aimed basically at your reticle, horizontally only. You can now also aim it between two targets to hit both of them. And the radius is slightly increased up to six feet wide rather than just four feet wide. This means when you go cast this, let's say here, we can cast it like so. You can see that you get like two arcs of Reeve just there. And if you aim it between both of them, you can sometimes hit both of them if they're within close enough proximity to each other like this. So that's pretty nice, bit of a buff there, specifically for the AoE. But now we go to the Vanguard, and there's been some changes here too. Your Tide of Iron at will, magnitude's gone up to 120, it will no longer have the additional added effect of that damage increase, and its threat duration also gone down to 5 seconds. Now, this is not really a nerf, and we'll explain why when we actually cover the changes to threat on the tank, because you will generally just use this power for that increased threat, which is far more effective than it ever was before, meaning you're actually gonna wanna use this now. You can just go cast that on your target like here as before. And that gives you the buff here of Tide of Iron. However, Threatening Rush, your primary threat at will, is getting a magnitude reduction from 80 to 60. This is a bit of a nerf, but again, you will see how it will actually be a bit more impactful. Now, if you don't animation cancel, you'll find that the cast time is a little bit faster. If you did animation canceling, it's about the same. However, the block has been changed so that you won't regenerate action points as quickly when you enter the stats. So you can't use animation canceling to get your action points back as quickly. You're still gonna take 40, 45 seconds to get your daily power back. Otherwise, Line Breaker got a pretty big magnitude increase and the cooldown reduction, with then the staying power feat having its duration increased to 10 seconds. That is the feat you can use in conjunction with Enforced Threat to give it an increased threat generation effect, which now actually works and is far better than before. So let's jump into all these threat changes and how they're actually going to impact what powers you're going to be choosing, what powers you're going to want to choose, which ones you can choose, which ones you can actually now not choose anymore and gain a bit more survivability by having some more defensive powers. These are all the changes right here. You may see a bunch of nerfs. But the base threat on the fighter has been increased drastically to match your Paladin. Gone up to 1,500, nearly tripled. Tide of Iron, that threat increase has gone from 50% to 500%. 10 times more effective now. That is massive. And that is why Tide of Iron, you will be wanting to use it now for that buff. With the Threatening Rush reduction, you might not want to use that over let's say Brazen Slash. 
you'll see why. But the increased effect on Threatening Rush, Linebreaker, Retaliate, Shield Thrower has gone from 800% to 300%, which means they're still going to deal about the same amount of threat when you consider the massive buff to your base. It just means everything else that done damage before that did not have increased threat is now going to deal like three times more damage with regards to threat. And then staying power. The threat increase gone from 50% to 500%, although it wasn't working before. But it, now it does. I've tested it. It actually works. You do gain that plus 500% threat increase, which is huge. So let's have a look. What does that mean with regards to what powers you want to be choosing? How much effective magnitude is this power when it has increased threat? If you were to use Threatening Rush versus Brazen Slash. What is the difference there in terms of threat now? Well, let's have a look at the magnitudes then. And you can see straight up here, Brazen Slash before was only having like 550 magnitude in terms of threat, and now it's 1,500, so nearly tripled. But then if you use Tide of Iron plus Staying Power, giving you plus a thousand increased threat, 500% from here, 500% from here, you can get this magnitude per hit to be the equivalent of 2,500. Tide of Iron will be up there at 3,000, but Threatening Rush will be 4,500. So yes, it will be good with Threat, and before it was about 3,520. After the magnitude nerf, it's now 2,700. But if you include the buffs to Tide of Iron and Staying Power, you're now at 4,500, which is a thousand effective magnitude increase than what it was before. It also means if you look at what it was before, 3,500, it makes using Brazen Slash far more or less punishing with regards to threat generation because that's now going to have 2,500 versus just 550. Absolutely massive right there, meaning you can change up your playstyle and if you don't need all that threat from Threatening Rush, you can just go with Blaze, Brazen Slash with Stamina Regen plus Tide of Iron for the increase to your base threat. And because Tide of Iron is not just affecting your Brazen Slash, it's going to affect all your encounter powers, it makes it really good. Now Shield Throw, this is where you might not want to use shield throw anymore because if you want to be switching over to the feet staying power which i highly recommend because the increased threat effect then with enforced threat actually being impactful means it's really good to use this and it's already really good to use this because you reduce the awareness of your enemies by 10 percent which is huge you're basically increasing everybody's damage against the target by 10 percent so there's not a lot of point to use shield throw after this change you can still use it, and if you really need the threat, I would maybe recommend that. Especially because then it only has a 5 second cooldown, and with Tide and Staying, it would have like 11,250 magnitude. But if you had it feated, it would be 24,000 magnitude. I actually need to adjust this because you can't have Staying with the Shield Throw feet, so that's a bit misleading. Let me just adjust that. There we go. So if you have Tide plus the Shield Throw Thrower feet, you'll have Shield Throw basically at nearly 20,000 effective magnitude and using that every five seconds is pretty massive. But keep in mind of the plus 500% threat you would get otherwise with the Staying feet. So Anvil of Doom with the Staying feet and Tide, you're getting up to 22,000. Line Breaker with the new change. Again, up to like 22.5 thousand versus only 8,800 before. Retaliate. This is massive. You've gone up to 60,000. Before, the maximum you could get was like 35,200. Now, 60,000. This is where a ton of your threat's going to come from. Make sure you're triggering that retaliate during the artifact call and you nearly have your threat sorted. Plus then your daily and the Manticore Bite and absolutely it's sorted. Because again, Manticore Bite is also going to have times three damage with threat than it was before. Earthshaker versus Bladed Rampart for threat. You can see that right there. You would need to have four hits of Bladed Rampart to equate to Earthshaker. So if you have a damage over time effect on you and you use your Bladed Rampart, you will usually get a lot more threat out of that than, let's say, Earthshaker. So it'll depend on the fight what you want to use there. But with this change, you'll basically want to use Tide of Iron as your at will there and have then Brazen Slash. You should be able to afford that. 
you generally won't anymore need the extra threat from threatening rush you're better off just with the stamina regen and maintaining tide of iron make sure to cast every five seconds from there you'll want to absolutely have enforced threat and you want to have it with staying power you'll cast that every time it's off cooldown 12 seconds so you'll nearly always have the increased threat from there on top of that the power will place you on top of the threat list and reduce the enemy's awareness it's like an all-in-one power it's pretty huge it just doesn't actually increase your threat directly it will just buff up all your threat abilities from there just make sure you're using that retaliate ability then with your other encounter powers what would you use well you could totally use knight's valor plus steel recovery that gives you a ton of stamina regen because like every second you're connected to somebody with knight's valor it counts as a casting another encounter power that's pretty crazy right there on top of that you're drawing all the threat from the person you're tethered with and you protect them from damage and otherwise you can probably then use knight's challenge or iron warrior but if you do really need more threat you can have line breaker right there and you'll just kind of forget about shield throw that's to be honest what i would go with here so in my opinion that's where fighters going maintaining tide of iron maintaining staying power plus your enforced threat effects all there even though enforced threat is a radius with a taunt you can usually position yourself so that you aren't taunting let's like, say the other boss if you needed to do a tank switch but if you really need that single target tank switch then you would have to slot in anvil plus anvil of challenge and with your base threat being increased, Anvil's effective damage with threat is just gone up by like times four, times five nearly. So that's about it for the fighter changes, the general ones here, the dreadnought ones here, and the vanguard ones here with then all their threat changes. That increased threat from Tide of Iron and staying power is massive. Like a thousand percent added to your 1,500 percent means you have 2,000 500 percent base threat and you can pretty much reliably maintain that you can get some extra recharge speed making force threat nearly just 10 seconds and you're always having that effect and casting tide of iron every five seconds done massive threat retaliate is just then insane your at will's got good threat like before you can still crutch knight's valor again if you don't want to be doing that I would recommend line breaker for extra threat cooldown's been reduced and the effective threat magnitude gone up to above 22,000 now so hopefully this was somewhat insightful to some of you guys out there and uh, we'll see you guys around looking pretty good for fighter for module 27 goodbye for now